Hare Krishna World Racers, Vina and Roger here. Let's watch Mathura, 1000 years of desecration and devotion from the YouTube channel Bharat Varsh Project. Yeah, so we know what happened in Ayodhya and this is uh, going to be recounting the tale mm. in Mathura. So let's find out all about this disaster. And hit the like button for Lord Krishna. Leave some Hare Krishnas in the comment section and some Krishna emojis. Thousand years of struggle. Krishna. Mathura, the sacred cradle of Lord Krishna's birth, mm. stands as a pivotal place among the revered Saptapuri, the seven sanctified cities held in high esteem by Hindus. This divine haven is also known mm. by illustrious name of Mokshadayani Tirtha, echoing with spiritual significance and ancient resonance. Its saga echoes through the oldest Indian epic, the Ramayana where the valorous Ikshvaku prince Shatrugna confronts and conquers the demon Lavanasura. Hmm? Never heard of that one. The dust of this legendary battle settles. The land undergoes a transformative journey. Initially crescent Madhuvan for its lush woodlands, evolving into Madhupura, ultimately adopting the name Madhura. In this epic narrative, Katra, once a bustling marketplace, ascends to the divine prominence as Krishna Janmasthan, the paramount pilgrimage site in Mathura. Mm. The enchanting tale unfolds as Lord Krishna emerges into the world within the mm. confines of a prison cell, mm. where his parents Devaki and Vasudeva found themselves captive at the hands of his maternal uncle King Kansa of Mathura. The imprisonment oh, was a consequence of a prophecy remember. predicting yeah. the demise of Kansa at the hands of Devaki's child. Right. Mm. After the era of Lord Krishna, his great grandson Vajranabha built a temple at the very place where Krishna came into this world. Wow. Oh. In the mystical verses of Rig Veda, Krishna whispers its enigma, a tribute to the shades of black or dark. Across the scrolls of time, Indian sages like Patanjali and the grammarian Panini etch Krishna's name, while the echoes of devotion resound in the script of Greek luminaries Megasthenes and Aryan. Amid the reigns of mm. indo scythian or Shaka and the Kushan kings, the worship of Krishna as Vasudeva reached its zenith. Mm. In a grim turn of history, the sacred persons of Madhura mm. witnessed a tragic tale, mm. starting with the ruthless desecration and pillaging by Mahmud of Ghazni. Mm. In the fateful year of 1018, Mahmud launched an assault on Madhura, vanquishing a coalition of rulers and claiming the life of Hindu King Chandrapala. The city, once a beacon of opulence, fell victim to a relentless onslaught, described as being ruthlessly sacked, ravaged, desecrated and destroyed. Hmm. al Utbi, the chronicle in Mahmud's court, chronicled this dark chapter in his work Dhari Ke Yamini, lamenting the obliteration of a great and magnificent temple in Mathura. Mahmud's onslaught left a harrowing aftermath over 20 days. All the idols were incinerated, gold and silver were melted for plunder, and the city itself was reduced to ashes. Wow. The once vibrant artistic soul of Mathura withered in the shadows of decline. Mm. Post the ruthless sack, Mathura found itself under the rule of Rastrakutas, who valiantly endeavoured to resurrect some fragments from its former glory. A subsequent account by historian al Biruni, a mere few years after Mahmud of Ghazni's pillage, painted Mathura as a preeminent pilgrimage site in India. In a resilient attempt to revive the spirit of the sacred, Maharaja Vijayapala Deva, the ruler of Mathura, in the year 1150, constructed a temple on the hallowed crowns of Sri Krishna's birthplace. Mm -hmm. However, this noble effort succumbed to the ravages of time and conflict. Sikandar Lodi, an Islamic invader, raised the temple once again in the same century, Jeez. transforming revered shrines into rubble. The stone idols met a grisly fate, repurposed as meat weights for the town butchers. What? The Hindus oh, of geez. Madura endured further indignities, forbidden from shaving their heads and beards 
in a cruel twist of oppression. The echoes of this tragic narrative reverberate through the pages of history, marking Madura's descent into a haunting symbol of desolation. Intriguingly, the focal point of Madura, known as Kesh of Dev Temple, emerged, possibly reconstructed, drawing attention from various travelers who ventured into the Mughal court. One such observer was Father Antonio Monserrat, a Jesuit priest who explored Madura in 1580 to 1581 during the reign of Mughal Emperor Akbar. He penned vivid descriptions of a temple elegantly built in the pyramidical style, lamenting that the only one Hindu temple left out of many. Yet, amidst the ruins, he unveiled a scene of pilgrimage, narrating huge crowds of pilgrims coming from all over India to this temple, which is situated on the high bank of Chamanis or Yamuna River. Yeah. The echoes of this temple's endurance reverberated in the accounts of other European voyagers, including Francius Bernier and Jean Baptiste Travernier, making it a resilient testament amid the scars of history. A mere two decades before Emperor Aurangzeb decreed the temple's demise, the French merchant and jeweler, Jean Baptiste Travernier, who ventured into Madura in the year 1650, left behind a vivid chronicle of the sanctuary. In his captivating travelogue, Travernir unfolds the grandeur, stating that after the temples of Jagannath in Puri and Kashi, the most paramount is that of Mathura, hmm. about 18 kilometers from Agra on road hmm. to Delhi. It is one of the most opulent edifices in all of India, once teeming with pilgrims. The temple sprawls across such immense proportions that it commands visibility from five or six kilometers away. Wow. Its structures lofty and magnificent. The reddish hued stone quarry near Agra bestows an exquisite touch. The pagoda, with only one lofty entrance, adorned with numerous columns and figures of both men and beasts on either side. In the tumultuous year of 1617, the resounding echoes of destruction reverberated through the sacred grounds of Madura as the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb issued the fateful decree to annihilate the temple. The harrowing annals of Aurangzeb's tyrannical reign are vividly chronicled in the Islamic record of Masire Alamgiri, exposing instances of fanatical cruelty that plunge into depths of religious desecration. In the chilling winter of 1670, the city of Madura bore witness to Aurangzeb's merciless plunder culminating in the obliteration of the revered Keshav Rai temple, a sanctified place of Lord Krishna's divine birth. In its place, a Shai Eidga was built, casting shadows over the sacred grounds that once echoed with Vedic traditions. The narrative takes a grisly turn as tales unfold of jewel deities, once revered, now relegated beneath the steps leading to Nawab Begum Sahib's mosque in Agra sacrilegiously positioned to be trampled under the feet of triumphant invaders. Jeez. Madhura, a hallowed name associated with deity worship, was ruthlessly renamed as Islamabad, symbolizing the what? obliteration oh of my. its spiritual foundation. The echoes of destruction resonated far and wide, reaching from Katak in Odisha to Medinipur in Bengal, where soldiers were ruthlessly instructed to annihilate every house harboring a Vedic deity built in the last 12 years. What? The tyrant's Why? command spared no sanctuaries, Jeez. allowing no respite for innovations, as the very fabric of Vedic tradition unraveled under relentless onslaught of Aurangzeb's cemetery. After Aurangzeb's demise in 1707, the Mughal Empire crumbled, plunging North India into chaos and disrupting Hindu pilgrimages. In 1736, Marathas, led by Peshwa Baji Rao I, sought control over Mathura, Prayag, Gaya, and Kashi from Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah, fueling unrest. Mm. The Second Anglo Maratha War in 1804 brought Mathura under British rule. The land at Katra, auctioned in 1807, included the Eidgah, going to Raja Patnimal, aspiring to build the Keshav Dev temple. The 1920s dispute centered on Shahi Eidgah's claim to the land. In 1944, 
Jugal Kishore Birla acquired the land for rupees 13400 and in 1951 vested it with the Sri Krishna Janmasthan Trust for a temple Industrialists like Jayadayal Dalmia and Hanuman Prasad Podar funded the Sri Krishna Janmasthan Temple complex rising next to Shahi Eidgah in the painful yet emotional journey to reclaim Ayodhya and Mathura where Hindu dharma's essence resides the struggle unfolds as a timeless epic mm. these sacred grounds witnessing the births of lord rama and lord krishna embody a faith that endures in independent mm. india the battle to reclaim these holy places is no less than medieval wars shifting from swords to court rooms the emotional weight of quest remains steadfast a struggle for the heart and soul of hindu legacy a course of history reverberate in the contemporary challenges intensifying hindu's plight the journey marked by emotion legal intricacies and societal debates mirrors a bygone era tears shed for ayodhya and mathura are crystalline tributes to unwavering faith yet like a triumph and crescendo the indomitable spirit of dharma prevails mm. in the end righteousness conquers adversity and the resilient community's heartbeat resonates with the melody of hope the struggle through difficult and turbulent times stands as a testament to the enduring power and the eventual triumph of hindu dharma a beacon in history's darkest corners yeah tragedy once again so very much very similar to ayodhya and what happened there with the ram mandir back in the past so yeah so it's eye opening to know that so lord krishna's grandson built the temple in the very spot where he was born in kansa's prison basically and then so that was prominent for a while and it seemed like it was destroyed several times and then rebuilt to this magnificent temple and then that was eventually destroyed as well and then a mosque was built on top of it so we know just by studying history now for a little bit of the the mogul invasions and yeah islam in general and what they did in the past was yeah that's that was their whole thing destroy temples and then built their own thing on top of it right and this one was in particular where they actually had the idols and they put it under did you understand that where they put them underneath the stairs no so that every time you know muslims were in the in the mosque and they, they were they were going up the stairs they would be walking on top of the idols the deities yeah. right so just showing a total disregard wow for you know idol worship in general and we know that islam doesn't believe in it it doesn't only not believe in it but it actually condemns it and if you do it then they see you as like lower beings mm -hmm. who basically aren't worthy of life it seems at that time it was just a total degradation of another religion so one religion comes in and totally displaces the other one and subjugates them to all sorts of atrocities like even going into the homes and then destroying the homes of anybody who also had idols you know deities in there as well so so it's a total misunderstanding of spiritual reality and truth and the limitation mm. of god in my mind you know at that time and still very much alive in islam is like you got to kind of wonder what this god is that they're worshiping if it's that limited so you're not understanding mm. that god is unlimited the source of everything in the hindus sanat and dharmis they know this very very well right so god is displayed in all of creation because god is the very source of creation can be expressed in nature and then deities are used in idols you know to link to the divine right so it's very beautiful in my mind so there's that ignorance of not understanding that and then wanting to destroy it so also it plays into politics right so these invading countries in armies and at that time very much affiliated with religion it wasn't secular back then it was like no the muggles are coming in um and they believe in this and then you believe in that so you're different and separate and we're going to destroy you and that's how it was so the battle right now so it's going from the ancient wars and medieval times to now in the courtroom to get back mm -hmm. you know what's happening so very much the success of the ram mandir um yeah and 
it, it's possible that that happens in other holy sacred places as well. So there is still a mosque. I uh, think so. In Matura? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then they did, sounds like they did build a temple right yeah. beside that mosque, but it's still not the same. Yeah. Right? So this is why that KK Muhammad was saying that the Muslims yeah. should openly give, mm. the, give the holy places back. And the government of India would be very accommodating, especially with, with Modi, you know, in charge mm. there now where they would be given land to build another mosque somewhere else. It's not a big mm. deal, right? So the big deal is that, like even how the Western media portrayed the Ram Mandir thing in general, was that they're, they're, they're not telling the whole story, the whole history, which is a very disservice to mankind in general, because not everybody's interested enough to go and research you know, the history. So the media leaving it mm. out is a very big blunder because it's only one side of the story. It's like, well, the truth is that the Muslims came in, destroyed sacred holy place of one religion, and then put their own in its place. Mm -hmm. You know, that's awful. And it's not like any religion shouldn't have to stand for that. There needs to be this respect, mm -hmm. you know, for all religions, even if you don't understand them, right? And if you understand the core spiritual teachings within your religion, like there is a core truth there. And if you understand that correctly, then you're not going to be imposing your beliefs onto others because, you know, your belief is all encompassing, right? God is source of absolutely everything, right? So who's to say how God can be expressed in the world and what what is the best way for people to seek God and realize God and search for God? You know, some people choose to worship an idol who's to say whether that's good yeah. or bad right so mm -hmm. anyways we hope for the best yeah that mm -hmm. all of this gets re resolved in time and the biggest hope of all is that the more limited religions that are kind of not even it's through ignorance so they know not what they do so they don't even realize that they're limiting god by imposing their beliefs on others so hopefully the greatest blessing to the whole world was would be when those religions kind of evolve mm. and understand the truth about God from a higher perspective. But anyway, so there's hope for that. Always. Beautiful. May the past be corrected. Yes, friends. Stop mm. fighting. Stop fighting. Stop fighting. Mm. Focus your mind on God. And mm. may Lord Krishna bless you all. <laughs>